Oh, Jeff here from Cobra Jet Steering. I'm going to do a really quick video here and try and show you how to install the new Cobra Venom Ultimate Steering on a Yamaha nozzle. In front of me I have a standard nozzle. All Yamaha nozzles are the same. I also have the newest reverse that came out this year. It's a plastic one. Everything prior to this was a metal one. The reason for the video, etc., is because I now have this all set up, so regardless of which year you have, the installation is the same. What we do first is put the boat in forward and get the reverse gate up out of your way. You're going to take a 12 millimeter and you're going to loosen up the factory bolt on the reverse gate. On the right hand side, start with the right hand side, it just works out better. What, there's a bushing inside this, make sure you don't lose it, make sure it's in there. Also, on all the bolts here, here, and on the bottom, the bigger bolts need thread locking compound. It can be blue thread locking compound, you can take it off, you can use red, whatever, but make sure you put something on just to be safe. Now, we're going to take the long, and I'm doing this on a tripod, so I'm, try, I'm guessing as to what you can see here. A long hex bolt and a big flat washer a spacer for the spring then this is a custom built stainless steel spring it's made specifically for this purpose we're going to put on a flat washer then we get the right hand side fin this is the one with the writing on the outside when it's on the right I'll put that there we've got a stainless steel bushing that's going to fit into the hole in the fin and then we've got another flat washer all that's going to go in back where the bolt came out of the reverse. Leave the springs back here out of the way because we're not going to need to load that up until the end. Now this bolt is very long. It's done for a reason. It reinforces your boss and makes it even stronger. Take a little bit, turn it all the way in. Remember the thread locking compound. You want to tighten it up. Okay. Springs loose. Fins float free. Nozzles from the factory, everything floats free, has a little bit of give to them. That's done on purpose. And we're going to go around to the other side, 12 millimeter wrench. Take the bolt out. Remember the bushings in there. Don't lose that bushing. We've got a button cap bolt. The size of this head is important because in front of your nozzle, there's a big aluminum anode. And if you have a regular head on there, when you turn all the way, it could hit it. So we don't want to restrict the movement of the nozzle. This was the way to do it. I'll take a flat washer, put it on the bolt. Got this little bushing that goes in here. One more flat washer. Remember your thread locking compound. This is an Allen wrench, so we'll put that in there. I'll try and turn this so you can see it. And just make sure everything's going in. And it's a pretty long bolt also. You know, longer bolts just make the boss that much stronger. So now you've got the two fins. Okay. Spring's still not loaded. Get this up out of the way. On the bottom, you have another 12 millimeter bolt. Take that bolt out. And there's a bushing in here that you don't want to lose. Take that little bushing. And what we're going to do now is take the short hex bolt. Hopefully you can see that. And then a flat washer. Another stainless steel bushing. And a little thrust washer. And then this says this side up. So that's going to go towards the nozzle. I'm going to put this here. We're going to get either some silicone sealant or some Marine 5200 or something similar and we're going to run a bead, a pretty generous one, right along this line right here. Then we're going to put the thread lock and compound on the bolt. Make sure we put this little spacer back. And just tighten that up. You can't really make these bolts much longer because there's no place for them to go. So that thread lock and compound is real important there. Now you've got your stabilizer in. Next we're going to go to the actuator. 
the actuator will align with these fingers. And wherever you set your bolts is how high or how low your fins are going to be. If you turn it around this way, it's going to work to where when you're going slow, the fins are down. Remember, anything under here isn't in the water or the, when you're going fast anyways. But once you start picking up speed, this is going to get in here, it's going to lift it up. And the nice part is it's not going to affect your wake, it's not going to make a spray, and it's not going to be annoying in any way. It'll only give you slow speed steering and nothing at high speed. There's all other options, and I'll try and do another video just explaining all the different settings and options for the different boats, because these are made to fit every Yamaha jet boat from the exciters on up. Single engine, twin engine. So, put in the little button caps on the side. And these screws don't need any thread locking compound because they're going to have nylock nuts, which will lock themselves. So just for the installation here, I'm just going to set them all the way down. And it's 10 millimeter, not. Let me just snuck this up for you. Okay, so now you've got your actuator, your side floor stabilizer, and here's the trick with the spring. Hopefully, you can see this. So I'm going to just pull it around and flip it over. Once you flip it over, that's it, it's activated. As far as the reverse goes, it comes down, and this is the reason I wanted to show this, because this is a bigger reverse. It comes and fits right inside of here. Nothing interferes. Okay, everything, the same thing if you have the older metal one, the process is exactly the same. And once you do this, you're all set. You can go on to the next nozzle if you have a twin engine boat. As far as uh, adjusting these, I like to take the tension off. That's the nice thing about this spring. You can literally take the tension off, flip it up out of the way to do things. Let's say you you have a twin engine, oh, 23, 24 foot boat, and you want a little bit of influence at high speed, but you want mostly low speed influence, and you don't want it to go flipping up when you go fast, dropping down when you go slow. Routine. This gives you so many options. This steering is so effective. Now, you see these holes. Let's say this is the right hand side and this is your outer fin and your hull has a V. So, we're going to stagger the fins. And this is one of my favorite ways of doing it. We're going to stagger the fins. We're going to put the outside ones up and the inside ones down. So, what you've done effectively is when the boat's up on plane, most of the fin comes out of the water anyways. But now you've set it up. Put that thing back. Now you've set it up so that when you're running along at high speed, a little bit of the outside fin's making connection, giving you feedback, giving you a little more response, etc. But not a lot of steering. So you actually can go one notch at a time. My next generation is just being made now is going to have one extra hole, so you can put them even higher. So now you've got reduced the amount of influence at high speed, but you've got plenty of low speed. You've actually staggered the fins, so when they're moving through the water now, they're not moving side by side. They're, one's higher than the other, and they're actually grabbing more water. Now let's say you're running a older, earlier model, lower hull, 18 foot. Then you'd want to do this, say, both fins up and start, I would suggest, on, on the smaller uh, hulls, you start with the fins all the way up, see how you like it, and then go one notch at a time until you find what you like, your preference is. Um, you're not getting a, a set of fins that does what we want it to do, and then you want something different, you got to buy a different set of fins. Right now, with this, you can get it to do just about everything and anything you could ever want it to do. 
and it's not going to increase the draft of the boat, it's not going to upset the wake, um, and it's so effective that once you get behind the wheel and drive it, you go, my God, I can't believe these things are doing what they're doing. It's just the way they're made, behind the nozzle, the amount of rotation and travel they get has a lot of effect. The fact that they don't flex and give and bend makes them very effective. They don't need to be any bigger than this. So now you've got your fins set up higher and you can set them for whatever boat you, particularly boat you have or whatever you want to do. You want to leave the boat sitting in uh, shallow water and you're concerned that they're going to beat on the bottom? Flip the spring off. The way this actuator works, once the boat's running, your spring holds you down, but that's more of a backup for when you're in reverse and there's no thrust coming out. When the thrust's coming out, it's riding right over the top of this, and it won't let it pass through. So it's pretty, it's holding your fins down pretty good. When you slow down, put it in neutral, put it in reverse, your spring comes into play, and it's a backup. So when it's operating in the other direction where it's going up, the thrust is holding it up and the spring's pulling it back down. So the spring's important, but if you were to flip it off and say in, in shallow water and forget it, the fins would still work until you probably backed up and of course there's nothing holding them down. But as far as going forward goes, it'd still be on there.